Hello once again YouTuber and welcome back to another nostalgic review with The Domain. Today, The Covenant's getting some major reinforcements with The Covenant Wraith, and it is a beauty. We've had a few different Wraiths over the years, a couple of iterations, a couple of steps up in terms of design principles, but I don't know, there's something that just hits right about this, and I always have to weigh up like how much is nostalgia, how much is me actually verifying that it's a good product. This is uh, excellent, I think it really is excellent, and for the, just the second year of Mega producing sets. This was about the fall of 2010 and they'd come a long way very quickly. They'd introduced the brand new Hayabusa Spartan. Oh, it's so glorious. It is like truly one of the best molds we've ever got. And unfortunately, due to licensing issues, we'll never get another one again. It is uh, lost to the old articulation era, I'm afraid. But the Hayabusa Spartan is not the only character to get a full overhaul. We've got this beautiful combat elite. And while this is not a new mold, it is so much better than this one. Like, are you kidding me? This is an insane step up. And this figure was kind of reimagined in a Covenant drop pod eventually. But look at the level of detail compared between the two. Like, it's it's actually crazy, the uh, step up. And this blue elite was pretty much all we got for a long time until this bad boy took the stage and wiped out the competition. Like, this is such a beautiful mold. I love that white. I love the greys. This always uh, went down for me as one of the best old articulation elites. I just love the design through and through. The purple and green lights are a gem. The blue energy sword control really well with the white. When you do a full white figure, any other colors, even gray, pop out so nicely. And you can see those green lights all across its legs, the purple on its chest. It's gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. And it's fighting against this Hayabusa. I mentioned in my previous review that the Gremlin was the point that I thought Mega was really innovating with their vehicles. Same with the Arctic Wolverine, to be fair. But this is the first time that I really thought they were innovating with their figures. Like, the figures had been pretty stagnant for a few series. I mean, like, pretty much spring and fall of 29, 2009, I keep on saying that, and spring of 2010. This was fall 2010 and they really stepped it up. The Hayabusa comes with his katana, which is a great touch, and also a clip to attach it in its back. And we got a lot of uh, Hayabusas after this, an arctic pink yellow with the uh, pelican. Yeah, we got a lot of good ones, but this one, I don't know, I think orange might be my favorite. Apparently he doesn't want to hold his katana anymore. But yeah, I think orange might be my favorite. I just I just think it's an exceptional color to choose. The white perfectly uh, reflects off it. The detailing on his shoulders in particular is really nice. And the sort of wash, the inky wash that runs into his orange makes him look dirty. Like he's in the middle of fighting a wraith per se. These two are some of the best figures. I think the best figures we'd got in a set up to this point. They were really good. Then we got the UNSC turret. This is a gauss turret and it's pretty clever that they included this. You know, we got the original green turret with the chopper, but then they innovated by adding the Gauss, and this is a sort of reflection of the time because the Gauss hog was included uh, as a step up from the warthog and included this Gauss cannon, and now we've got the Gauss cannon in a uh, little blue light form on an Arctic base to sort of match the Arctic theme because we had a lot of Arctic sets at the time, and the Wraith could have been a standalone, but it's nice that they integrated it into the Arctic theme by adding this little base plate as well. And let's talk about this Wraith. My goodness, there's a lot to talk about. It is really impressive, man. Like, it stands the test of time. I truly believe so. My favorite part of this build, which is always so satisfying, is these uh, sort of run-off smooth pieces. I don't even know if I can get any out without breaking the whole thing. These are really nice, and they just, uh, they, they use perfectly, staggered in a line, sort of like a diagonal line, and smoothed off beautifully. Either side, everything is very smooth. And like I said, Mega struggled in 2009 with uh, very rough pieces without any smoothed off sections. This is their golden time to say, hey, we've learned a lesson. Oh, we're still gonna have some rough bits at the back. These look quite similar to the original Ghost. But yeah, we've we've generally learned that lesson. We're gonna smooth things off. These clip in really nicely and they're stopped by this. And then there's a lot of exhaust pieces. It feels like a working, moving machine. I always thought that this bit at the back was weird. It just seemed sort of loose, like the should be something there, especially these, there should have been something clipped on. There's been a lot of iterations of the Wraith Cannon and they've all had different uh, variations to them, but this one, the way it folds in like that 
is really smart. These also fold out and just look at that. It's on this really nice uh, long piece, this long thin piece. And when you look at the inside of the turret, it's got a lot of detail with those blue studs and a blue firing stud. I always love those studs and I think Mega's lost sight of that with uh, sort of more recent releases. The stud gives a nice muzzle flare effect and you don't have to put any extra energy or effort into it. Then we've got two places the figures can be positioned. We've got a turret section here. The turret is super, super basic. Literally just uh, a place for the character to sit and uh, like a little, a cute little stud. At least it can move back and forth. It's quite nice. It falls apart very easily. Open this hatch here. The inside is quite barren. I mean, like super, super barren, but still does the job. There should be a sticker to call there. I don't know where it went. And it's just a big empty void space for the elite to sit inside. Oh. <laughs> And he, he does, he does all right. Well, does he actually sit inside? Is he actually able to sit inside fully? I'm not sure. Uh, well, well, kind of, kind of. Uh, leaves a little bit to be desired that, but in general, this wraith is a killer, man. Underneath, we got some transparent bricks and studs giving it a nice elevated effect. And I'm in love, man. I've always been in love with this wraith. I must have built like, 10, 15, 20 of these in my lifetime, and uh, I'll never stop enjoying building them. They're actually a really, really enjoyable build, which some aren't. Some of the old sets, particularly the uh, delicate ones, like the Hornet, are really miserable to build, but this one has always been fun. So let me know in the comments down below, guys, have you managed to pick up this set before? I'm sure most of the people watching this, either you're a new, uh, collector of mega so maybe you just have the more recent wraith or maybe you're an old schoolie like me and you've built many of these in your time so let me know what your interactions with this wraith over your life have been and as always thank you very much for tuning in today this was another video with the domain i want to thank my patrons for keeping this channel going particularly my arbiters and my honor guard patrons and even my hashtag billy gang you can donate for just three dollars a month and keep this channel going as always you stay awesome you stay safe out there folks and the hayabusa is signing off